guys. So today we're going to pick up where we left off and we're going to be talking about um, the we're finishing up the properties of liquids. So last time we talked, we had talked about diffusion, which remember is the mixing of a liquid through its random motion. We had talked about evaporation, which was the process where the liquid leaves the surface of the liquid um, and forms a gas and leaves that way. We had talked about vapor pressure, which is a consequence of that evaporation. So once the liquid has left as gas, that gas now has collisions and creates a pressure above the gas, and we, we recognize that as being the vapor pressure. Um, and we had spoken about the boiling point. So the boiling point is that special point, remember, where all of the liquid has enough kinetic energy to want to leave as a gas all at the same time. So every liquid molecule is ready to evaporate at the exact same time, and we call that temperature the boiling point. So today we're going to be talking about equilibrium. First, reestablishing what an equilibrium is, this dynamic equilibrium, and then also figuring out how we can stress that equilibrium to force more of our liquid to form a gas or eventually to cool it down enough and then form it into a solid because that's the third point that we're going to talk about. Liquids also have surface tension, which you can see here. But that is really a part of chapter 15, so we're not going to touch on that in this uh, particular lesson. So this is um, going back to our uh, three different flasks that we talked about from yesterday. We have the initial setup flask here that has the liquid in the bottom um, in a closed system. And then eventually evaporation continues at a constant rate. So evaporation is going to rise, more liquid is becoming gas, and then eventually the rate of evaporation is going to stabilize, um, and it's going to be equal with the rate of condensation, and we're going to call that time equilibrium. So once we have this equilibrium established, we can start to shift the equilibrium by either heating or cooling the system. So we're gonna start with what happens to our equilibrium if we heat the system. So we have this closed system, we have uh, equal amounts of gas particles becoming a liquid becoming gas and gas becoming liquid. And so what we've seen in this equilibrium is that we have liquid water and that liquid water is gaining heat. And when it gains enough heat, that sends it across to becoming a vapor. So if we increase the heat of the system, we shift the equilibrium towards the product, toward the vapor, okay? So as we heat up the, the container, we should be making more and more and more gas. That should be pretty obvious. I mean, we do that when we boil a pot of water on the stove. If you're gonna make some pasta, you put the heat underneath, you add the heat, and eventually that heat is gonna force more vapor, more liquid, uh, or more gas um, to be coming out less liquid. So that's how we shift the equilibrium. That's what we mean. So in this new equilibrium, we still have equal amounts, um, equal numbers becoming liquid as becoming uh, gas, but the amount has gotten larger. So it's still the same number going from liquid to gas as gas to liquid, but now maybe instead of 15 molecules going from liquid to gas and 15 going from gas to liquid, we're talking about a thousand molecules going from liquid to gas and gas to liquid. Um, when you see this on your stove, this looks like that kind of rapid boil where you're seeing the liquid kind of bubbling up in the bottom and then condensing on the lid and rolling back down into the liquid. So you can actually really easily visualize this, you know, when you're making some macaroni and cheese a little later on today. The second way we can shift the equilibrium is we can shift it the other way. We could start to remove heat. So if we take the, the direction where we're going to pull heat out of the system, we can cause the vapor to condense into liquid. And this is going to shift so that we have less and less and less vapor in the air. One of the things you may have noticed if you've ever gone snowboarding or you've gone up somewhere where it's really cold, when it's cold, it's also very dry. 
those two things happen together because as you decrease the heat, less liquid water is able to exist in the air. And so that liquid water condenses down, or sorry, the gas water condenses down into liquid. And so you get this very dryness in the air. So as you get colder and colder and colder, we finally get so cold that we reach another equilibrium where we're so cold that the liquid actually starts to solidify. It can't even slide past each other anymore. That diffusion motion, amount of motion, is completely gone. And they're finally so becoming a solid and they're forming down into this um, solid state. As our temperature continues to decrease, it gets lower and lower and lower. Eventually, we come to the action of freezing. So freezing is a physical change of a liquid to a solid by the removal of heat. And it's important to note here that we think of freezing as only happening to water. But when plastic goes from liquid plastic to solid plastic, that's also freezing. Or when uh, liquid metal goes from liquid metal and it solidifies, that's also freezing. So that's the change of a liquid to a solid. It does not have to happen at a cold temperature. It depends on the substance. Some substances become solids at very hot temperatures, um, like rock or like you would never expect to see a rock if you put it over the stove melt, okay? Because its melting point is just so high. And so it freezes at quite a warm temperature still. And so it's just important to note that, that you have to remove your opinion about freezing, like I'm freezing, because that feels like a temperature. And really just to realize that freezing is the act, the physical change of a solid, of a liquid finally forming a solid. So that's the end of our properties of liquid. We have talked about liquids ability to diffuse. I feel like I should put more check marks. We have talked about its evaporation. We've mentioned vapor pressure, boiling point, and equilibrium. And now we finally just did a little bit about how it forms solids when it freezes. So the next topic for us and the last topic for the chapter will be solids and we'll see that tomorrow.